G'day, welcome back. Let's talk about some YouTube updates. Some of these could be very small, but they could be very meaningful for some people. So let's check it out. As you can see, I'm on my dashboard right now. And usually you see here in the bottom corner, what's new in the studio. And we're not really going to looking at any of these, although what you can do is click through and it will take you to, regardless, nearly regardless of what you choose, it'll take you through to like a like an updates page. And that's where we really want to go. So I'm just going to click on say, live streaming restrictions. And it brings you to the, the update screen, YouTube policy updates, just like we see here. A minor update here, but interesting nonetheless, are these ones for June. Let's look at the ones for June. Community guidelines is one of the categories. Uh, update to feature eligibility. Now I've talked a little bit, uh, well, not a little bit, a fair bit on my channel about feature eligibility. I talked about it years ago when it didn't really matter when I was still experimenting with it. Now it is an integral part of the reason why you have the community tab or not, the reason why you have um, access to pin comments or not, that's a new new one. So let's read this. Uh, starting in July, so they're announcing it in June, starting in July, to help protect the YouTube community channels that are already using advanced features. And if you wanna know more about advanced features, I've got some videos, I'm gonna post one of them here. Uh, they must follow YouTube's community guidelines to maintain access. Channels that lose access, and this is uh, obviously uh, intimating that if you break a community guideline, then it will bump you out of advanced features. And if you lose if you lose access, you can regain it by rebuilding channel history or completing the verifications. Let's think about what features, advanced features gives you the community posts. Will you lose those? I'm not sure because if you have more than 500 anyway, you're gonna probably earn community posts regardless. So if you're under 500 and you do a community guidelines, maybe you'll lose community posts. Um, you could lose, also lose the opportunity to pin comments. It says learn more there, so I'm gonna open that up in another tab. And the one I just wanna mention briefly before we go and jump into that is the other one, product and feature policy, stories feature update. YouTube will no longer be supporting stories starting June 26, which I think um, we've, I don't know if I've talked about here, I've talked about my live stream. Uh, the option to create a story will no longer be available to creators. Yes, I did a, a short uh, in the last week or so that covers that one. But let's look at that, learn, what it says, learn more. Build and maintain your channel history. So this is taking us to the uh, documentation or in the midst of the documentation that's entitled, Unlock Access to Intermediate and Advanced Features. And it basically took us back to the whole what channel history is all about. So let's have a quick look at that because this is how we get it back unless we wanna you know, upload some sort of ID, your government uh, ID to the people at Google. You might not be comfortable with that, and then you just accrue channel history by being a good citizen on YouTube. Advanced features are a set of YouTube features that includes, for example, the ability to pin comments and higher daily upload limits, so there you go. Um, so if you're a frequent uploader, particularly around shorts, maybe you'll be limited if you lose your advanced features. Creators may unlock access to advanced features by consistently following YouTube's community guidelines and building sufficient channel history. Not complying with our policies will delay eligibility and for channels that already have access to advanced features, it can result in losing eligibility. So it's just what we were talking about in the introduction there. Uh, you might have advanced features, community guideline breach might bump you back to pleb status when it comes to advanced features and channel history. Uh, find examples below of actions that can lead to delays or more restricted level of feature access to your channel. Bear in mind, this isn't a complete list. So these are the things that you might uh, wanna look out not to do. Posting the same content repeatedly across one or more channels or repeatedly uploading content that you do, don't own and that isn't EDSA. What is EDSA? I have no idea. EDSA is education, documentary, scientific or artistic context. So when it comes to repeated content, that is a good example of this that has happened recently is people who upload a short and if it doesn't perform the way they want, they delete it and upload the exact same short again. That um, YouTube frown on that and this is something that can happen if you continue to do that sort of activity. So 
don't repeatedly upload the same content over and over. Uh, if YouTube takes something down and then you re-upload it and then they take it down and re-upload it, that could be the same thing as well. Okay, let's look at some of the other things that could get you removed from advanced features and have to build trust with YouTube again. Repeatedly posting abusive, hateful, dangerous, sexual, violent, and or harassing videos in all comments. So it's not just uploading content, but it's also how you behave in people's comments, whether it's on community posts, in under videos. Not just on your own channel, but you on behalf of your channel, being an idiot online, and don't think that's gonna um, affect what you're doing as a content creator, because it will. So these are a, a standard community uh, guideline things to look out for. Abusive, hateful, dangerous, sexual, violent, harassing. We know community guidelines talk about all that sort of stuff. Uh, the next one is spamming, scamming, misleading metadata, inaccurate reporting, or other deceptive practices. So trying to game the system. I've done a few videos on this lately. So this is one, one way it can bite you in the butt, as they say, if you go around uh, spamming, which is, which is basically mass leaving things in comments and live streams, and under videos, and community posts. Scamming is tricking people, basically. Tricking people into clicking on something or going to do something or the, pretend that you're a, a big YouTuber and you're in their comments giving away something that you're not really giving away. Misleading metadata. This is where you put Mr. Beast in your tags and you, the video has nothing to do with Mr. Beast. <laughs> Misleading metadata is when you make out your video to be something that it's not in the uh, description, in the tags and in the title where you're identifying and even the thumbnail where you're identifying what the video is about. If you're misrepresenting it, like this is like clickbait and beyond. That could be misleading metadata. So anything that doesn't accurately represent what the video is about. Inaccurate reporting. I'm not sure exactly how that applies. I'm not sure what it means by inaccurate reporting or other deceptive practices. It could be like purely, hey, I'm a, I'm, I'm, on, I'm doing a news thing and I'm reporting falsehoods as fact. It's like I'm making out, obviously there's room for um, parody and stuff but if you if it's obvious that you're doing a serious news program or documentary and you misconstrue the truth or um, put out false information deliberately with that intent of course um, then that maybe that's what they're talking about uh, or other just uh, deceptive practices we mentioned that so don't be deceiving don't trick don't be tricking people uh, the next one is cyberbullying or threats so don't uh, harass people we already missed, mentioned harassing one of the other points, but yeah, cyberbullying and threats. Don't go threatening people. Don't go being a douche on YouTube. Next one, impersonation. So pretending you're somebody that you're not. Uh, nudity, violating child safety and privacy. So you don't want to dox people and different things like that. And if you're violating child safety in any way, then you are a big douche, whether you're the parent, the guardian, uh, somebody unrelated, if you're doing anything nasty to, to, to kids or re misrepresenting kids or anything like that, then you're the scum of the earth and you shouldn't be on YouTube. Okay, next one. <laughs> that was getting a bit heavy there. Maintaining channels that are related to another policy violating channel. For example, a repeat spammer or scammer who owns multiple channels. So this, this is like you have multiple accounts purely for the purpose of trolling and scamming and doing uh, doing inappropriate things under uh, another channel. And also I think about like, you know, people make, um, we call them sock accounts or something and they're de deliberately trolling and they get timed out or hidden from channel on one, on a live stream and then they come in with the next account and do the same thing. They come in with the next, next account and do the same thing. They comment on a, a, a video under multiple different names to look like they make it look like that you get, get nasty brigading and nasty comments from a lot of people when it's just actually just that one person. Uh, the last point example, but you know, they say that these aren't all the examples. The last example is receiving copyright strikes. So you could receive a copyright strike if, it, if you start to get a pattern of copyright strikes. Remember it says strikes and not claims. Copyright strikes, that's where uh, your video is actually taken down because you're using other people's content and they've basically asked for it to be removed under DMCA. 
Let's look at what it says about regaining access to features. If your access to advanced features is restricted, by all the stuff we talked about above, you'll receive an email. Channels can regain access by improving their channel history or providing verification. Regularly active channels that have consistently followed YouTube's community guidelines can typically rebuild sufficient channel history within two months. So basically, yeah, if you, if you can stay clean, if you get done for one of these things and they bump you back to intermediate, you don't have advanced features, then you can usually earn it back within two months by staying in good standing. Now, uploading uh, verification, it says, uh, no, the idea of ver video verification isn't available to all creators. At any time, your current feature eligibility, eligibility status in YouTube Studio will show you the steps that you need to take to access advanced features. But yeah, so there's some of the updates around advanced features. So if you do get a bump back because of breaking a community guideline or something like that, and you get bumped back to only having intermediate features, and that means you won't be able to do some things like pin comments and stuff, then what you need to do is probably, I would advise just sitting out the channel history, just waiting to sit out and be a good citizen. In the meantime, just upload and don't do anything controversial, don't do any of the things that cause you to get kicked in the first place. And then over time, that channel history will be restored to you, um, typically within about two months, all going well. And you know everything will be back to normal in regards to advanced features and the things that are going to be linked to advanced features. Now, I suspect that YouTube are going to be linking different things to advanced features going forward. We've just seen recently them add pin comments get turned on if you have advanced features. So most of us, we already have pin comments. We already have advanced features because we've been on YouTube for a while. Uh, we have good standing. If we have good standing, then uh, we can use the pin comments. And one of the things that you can do in pin comments is drop links and things like that. Uh, link to the next video people should watch. Maybe if it's an affiliate link for that particular video, whatever it might be. The pin comments is, is, is a fairly important thing to have uh, on your videos if you can. Now, the one thing to keep in mind with pin comments, just as a side, because that's a recent announcement and update, is if you happen to lose that feature because you had pin comments, but now they made the change where you have to have advanced features and maybe you didn't at the time, then any pin comments that you already pinned will remain pinned. You just can't pin new comments and, and change pins and unpin and repin. Um, but that functionality, as soon as you get advanced features, you'll have that back. If you wanna know more about the advanced features, intermediate features, feature eligi eligibility, I've done a video on it a while ago. Most of it is still relevant, so check it out in this one right here. And in the meantime, this is Doug, and I'll catch you later. Subscribe to Doug Hughes and YT.